The horizontally opposed six-cylinder light airplane engine has been around for half a century and has been the preferred cylinder layout for light airplanes with high horsepower requirements. And let's be frank, it is probably the best sounding light aircraft engine configuration. But these air-cooled sixes like the Continentals and Lycomings has reached the peak of its development decades ago already and are unlikely to be further improved. And you might say, what's wrong with that? It has reliably powered Cessna 210s, Cherokee 6s and many other aircraft for more than 50 years. So why fix what ain't broke? As reliable and powerful as these old six-cylinder engines are, they have some efficiency disadvantages that threaten its future existence, like high fuel consumption, high emissions, they are very heavy, which results in lower power to weight ratios, they are somewhat restricted to using low lead F gas, or have some side effects from using unleaded fuels, and they are expensive to maintain, to name a few. So one company thought it was time to develop a modern, fuel efficient six cylinder engine that runs on a variety of different fuels, that's smaller, lighter and is meant to power new and existing high performance light aircraft. But to understand the direction this company took with this new engine, we first need to understand why the efficiency of the Conti and Lyco 6s can't be improved. To make engines more efficient, horsepower needs to be increased without increasing engine weight. And it needs to do that while burning less fuel. That's not easy to accomplish, but how would that be accomplished in the first place? To increase engine horsepower, its displacement can be increased, right? But that also increases weight and fuel consumption, so that is not an effective way to increase power to weight ratio or fuel efficiency. Larger displacement also means physically larger engines, which makes it challenging to fit into the existing fleet of light airplanes, and thus such an engine would not be a suitable replacement. Since horsepower is basically torque times RPM, another way to increase engine power is by increasing engine revolutions per minute. However, RPM for these engines can't be increased without needing a propeller speed reduction unit, since efficient airplane propellers can't turn faster than they already do, and the propeller speed will need to be slowed down with a redrive. Using a redrive is perfectly fine in concept, but clearly more space would be needed in the engine bay to fit a redrive to one of these engines. But to make a redrive worthwhile and overcome its disadvantages, RPM needs to be almost doubled or the power gains wouldn't be sufficient to offset the additional weight, friction and complexity that the PSRU introduces. And perhaps more obviously, the RPM of these old six-cylinder engines can't just be doubled, they need to be redesigned. But for a new airplane engine design, higher RPM would be a good way to increase power to weight ratio and thus contribute to better efficiency. But an even more effective way to increase engine power and efficiency is by increasing compression. This can be done by increasing the compression ratio of the combustion chamber or by using forced induction like a turbocharger. Both these ways has already been done on many of these legacy six-cylinder engines. Adding a turbocharger increases compression the most and has the biggest power and efficiency increase, but a turbocharger and its associated systems adds a lot of additional weight and complexity which increases engine cost and maintenance. This is why the majority of these engines are not turbocharged, and turbocharged versions are usually reserved for high-end applications, especially for high altitude requirements. Thus, increasing the compression ratio of the combustion chamber is overall a much more efficient way to improve, well, efficiency. However, heavily increasing compression ratios on engines that isn't designed for high compression usually negatively affects reliability. This means compression ratio can only be slightly increased before the engine needs to be redesigned to handle high compression. The final way to improve engine power and efficiency is by improving fuel and air mixing as well as air intake and air outlet airflow efficiency. 
Improving fuel and air mixing can be done by using fuel injection instead of carburetors, which is something that has been done on many of these engines decades ago already. But something that cannot be done on these engines is much improving air intake and outlet efficiency. And here's why. To improve intake and outlet efficiency, one would need more valves and different valve train designs, like overhead cams instead of the overhead valves or pushrod valve designs that these engines use. The widely in use overhead valve engine heads are more compact, partly due to the camshaft being inside the engine block and not on the cylinder heads. However, an overhead valve system has more moving parts, which means more friction, which is the opposite of what is needed of efficient engines. Overhead valve systems also usually has only two valves per cylinder, which means air inlet and outlet aren't optimally efficient, especially at higher RPM, which is another reason why these engines can't rev much higher than they already do. But overhead cams take up more space on the cylinder head. And if these engines are to use overhead cams, it would be almost impossible to fit into an existing engine bay without modifying engine cowl design. So these air-cooled sixes would need to be considerably smaller to allow overhead cam valve designs, which means smaller displacement and lower power. That is, unless power is made differently, like from high compression and high RPM, which would allow overhead cam valves to improve both power and efficiency. The reasons stated should make it clear why these popular six-cylinder engines are at a developmental dead end and improving them can't be done by making a few modifications and a brand new design is required if a more efficient engine is to replace these tried and trusted opposed six-cylinder engines. At least that's what one South African company by the name of Adept Airmotive thought and so designed a modern 120 degree V6 engine that fixes all of the problems of the legacy Boxer 6 engines. To sum up the idea behind their engine in their own words, our competitive advantage lies in considerable weight saving, robust and compact design, superior engine management, fuel efficiency and reduced maintenance costs. Their 120 degree V6 engine is only 3.2 liters in displacement but has a 280 horsepower naturally aspirated option as well as a 320 horsepower turbocharged version. The engines have a double overhead cam on each block with four valves per cylinder, is liquid and oil cooled, uses fuel injection and a dry sump lubrication system. Max engine RPM is 5,500 and a propeller speed of 2,700 RPM is achieved via an integrated PSRU that has a gear reduction ratio of around 2 to 1. The redrive also boosts torque at the propeller to a mind-boggling 780 foot-pounds or 1,057 newton meter for the turbocharged version. The engine is also FADEC, which stands for Full Authority Digital Engine Control. The specs are clearly impressive, but what about all important reliability? We simply won't know until there are sufficient numbers of these engines out there in the real world being used, but ADEPT did seem to consider reliability by, for example, using a billet crankshaft and conrods for better manufacturing precision as well as increased strength. Their biggest focus, however, seems to be on efficiency, making use of sequential fuel injection and electronic mixture optimization. In addition, making use of a double overhead cam with four valves per cylinder, air intake and outlet also contributes to better efficiency at high RPM, where its power is produced. The engine is also designed to run on F-gas, MOGAS, as well as biofuel, which makes the engine future-proof, or at least as future-proof as an internal combustion engine can be. But we still haven't addressed the elephant in the room. The 120-degree V6 engine is mostly used in motor racing, so it might seem an odd choice for an airplane engine. But in reality, it is actually simply genius. By introducing a bank angle, the opposing pistons can share a crank pin, which makes the engine shorter than an opposed six where each piston needs its own crank pin, making the crankshaft and thus the engine longer. A shorter crankshaft is a lighter and a stronger crankshaft. 
A shorter engine also means more flexibility to adjust for center of gravity on a variety of different airframes and also means it has space for a rear drive which in the Adept is actually integrated so it doesn't really make the engine much longer anyway. Seeing as we're dealing with a high RPM engine I'd say using a short crankshaft is a good decision for reliability. What about engine width? The engine makes use of double overhead cams, which is larger than the popular in aviation overhead valve systems. But since this engine is smaller in displacement and has a bank angle, that creates enough space to use a double overhead cam system and would still fit in any engine by a Legacy Boxer 6 would. What about engine balance? I'm not going in depth into what causes primary and secondary imbalance and for more detailed explanation have a look at the video in the card displayed here. A very short description though is primary imbalance is caused by the inertia or changing of direction of the pistons. Secondary imbalance is caused by the conrod going side to side and thus increasing and decreasing in length relative to its length in a fully upright position which accelerates and decelerates the piston's movement and causes vibrations. The Boxer 6 is nearly perfectly balanced and smooth. Since the pistons are horizontally or 180 degrees opposed and each piston has its own 180 degree separated crank pin, it has a perfectly even and smooth firing interval which greatly contributes to smooth running and is essential for airplane engines. And since the pistons are 180 degrees opposed, each piston cancels out the motion of the opposing piston and this gives it perfect primary balance. Additionally, since it basically has two three-cylinder banks opposing each other, with each piston in each bank being at a different stage of revolution at any point in time, meaning the acceleration and deceleration caused by the relative lengthening and shortening of the conrods cancel out each other and the Boxer 6 achieves perfect secondary balance. But why then did I say the Boxer 6 has near perfect balance? Since the opposing pistons each has its own crank pin and thus needs to be offset by a distance, the pistons doesn't actually perfectly oppose each other and this creates a twisting force when the engine is running which is called a rocking couple. However, the rocking couple vibrations produced in this case are very small and the Boxer 6 can just live with this tiny vibrations and it does not need to be cancelled out by a balance shaft. What about the balance of the 120 degree V6? 720 degrees, which is a full revolution of a four stroke engine divided by the number of cylinders is 120 degrees, which gives the crankshaft a crank pin separation of 120 degrees. This gives it a firing interval of 120 degrees, which is the same degrees as the bank angle. And in theory, this makes it the best V engine bank angle and gives it a perfectly even and smooth firing interval. Since it too has two banks of three cylinders, with each piston being at a different stage of its revolution at all times, it too achieves perfect secondary balance. Additionally, the 120 degree V6 does not have a rocking couple imbalance like the Boxer 6. Since opposing pistons share a crank pin, it has almost no offset and the few millimeters offset is probably not even worth mentioning and is basically negligible. Okay, so perfect secondary balance and no rocking couple vibrations. But what about primary balance? Unfortunately, the 120 degree V6 does not have good primary balance. Since the V6 basically has two banks of inline threes, which is an odd number, the pistons in each bank cannot cancel out each other's inertia like an inline four could. In the Boxer 6, this is not a problem as the pistons inertia is not cancelled out by other pistons in the same bank, but it's cancelled out by other pistons in the opposing bank. In the 120 degree V6 engine, however, the cylinder banks aren't directly opposed and thus the opposing pistons can't cancel out each other's inertia. As a result, the 120 degree V6 has no way to cancel out the primary vibrations without using a balance shaft. Since it isn't explicitly stated on their website, I've reached out to ADEPT to confirm if their engine uses a balance shaft. But unfortunately, at the time of recording, they have not yet responded. There was no reply that day. 
or the next. However, looking at what they do tell us on their website, we see phrases like excellent balance and smooth engine operation. And there's just no way a 120 degree V6 engine without a balance shaft can be described as having excellent balance. So I'm voluntarily putting my head on the chopping block and making an educated guess that their engine makes use of a balance shaft, which likely gives it exceptionally smooth running as they state. However, balance shafts add additional weight, friction and complexity, which increases engine cost and maintenance. But regardless of that, I think what Adept Airmotive has achieved with this engine is pretty impressive. Their engine weighs 3% less than comparable horsepower engines, while being 3% more fuel efficient, which is no small feat. Many companies seem to be on the hype cycle bandwagon that is electric propulsion. But realistically, electric is not a viable replacement for the existing fleet of light aircraft engines at the moment. And most likely, the more realistic answer lies in using more efficient internal combustion engines that has the option to run on sustainable biofuel, just like the Adept V6.